Good evening fellow gamers and welcome to another edition of Cheka Weekly, where we keep you up to date on all the gaming industry has to offer. Today we'll be discussing Black Ops 2 pre-order bonuses, the Guild Wars 2 release date, and giving a warm welcome to the Pyro. Let's step into your gaming news. The upcoming release of Far Cry 3 has been pushed back from the original release date of September 4th to be released on December 4th. Dan Hay, the producer at Ubisoft, had stated they are taking more time to create the best possible gameplay experience. I hope the third installation of Far Cry will reinvigorate players to the series as the second game was kind of a letdown from the high expectations from the first. Expect to see this title hitting shelves later this year. Criterion, the company behind the Burnout series, will now be taking the head of development for the upcoming Need for Speed Most Wanted game, as well as all future Need for Speed games here on out. Any actual future plans or major game changes have not been announced, although there is a plan to include all of the subtitles of Need for Speed into one game, such as Most Wanted, Underground, and Shift. It'd be pretty sweet to see all of these combined so we can race and get chased by cops. Or vice versa. Just Dance 4 has finally gotten a release date. Oh yeah, you can now dance away to music like Call Me Maybe, that's my favorite, or Moves Like Jagger by Maroon 5. The release date has been set for October 9th of this year for the Wii, PS3, and the 360. Still no PC. The game also features a new dance mode where you can battle your friends in round-based dance battles. Can't wait to play it. Rome 2 Total War has been announced. Or a leak of an announcement. Or a leak of an upcoming announcement, which was leaked. The latest issue of PC Powerplay has a teaser of the iconic blue and red legionnaires fighting one another, with the battle standards raised in the background with a giant gold Roman numeral 2 in the foreground. This is from the same magazine that leaked the Dark Souls PC edition, so it might be able to take in with some salt. We'll soon see if there's a second Rome Total War. More free-to-play games are coming to the market with the developers of the Darkness 2's take on the genre. Warframe has been announced, but without a release date. The pre-alpha trailer has been released, showing off some characters in big armor, shooting stuff in bigger armor. The closed beta test will be coming around fall of this year, and you can sign up now on their website for an invite. I'm down for free-to-play games, especially games with an extremely large development budget. Make your stuff. Spec Ops The Line had DLC planned from day one, but no word on what it actually entailed. The pack will include four cooperative missions that are to be set before the single player campaign events, as well as adding in new multiplayer levels and characters. The added stuff will be arriving in August, costing an entire amount of free. 2K had announced the co-op content a few weeks ago, but I've just stated that it will involve players having to fight through waves of enemies and sandstorms. Can't wait to try it. Wednesday was just full of Valve-related content, with the first story being that Half-Life 2 Episode 3 has some concept art that has been leaked onto the web thanks to the website Valve Time. These pictures include major plot events such as Alex wearing Eli's jacket, a helicopter crashed in an arctic location, and many more pictures including Zen. The images are actually from around 2008, but it doesn't deny that a third episode is in the works. Let's keep hoping that Valve can count to three. Valve finally released the much-awaited video of Meet the Class featuring the Pyro. The final class in the series has the most crazy stuff going on, showing the Pyro in a place called Pyroland, where it's helping all the cherub versions of the TF2 classes and being an all-around good person. But in actuality, it's destroying everything. To me, the video was kind of a letdown since it's told us nothing about the character unlike all the other videos. But it's worth a watch, so check it out. After Valve released the Meet the Pyro video, they told their lovely fans of their plans to make the Source Filmmaker, their take on giving the players the ability to easily animate and make videos using all the Source Engine games that Valve has made, as well as any other Source mods that a person may have installed. The Filmmaker is currently in beta and will be made available later this year, all available in the wonderful platform of Steam, and will be completely free. Can't wait to see what awesome stuff we'll see once people finally move away from Gmod movies. Guild Wars 2 has finally gotten the largest news that anyone following the game cares to know about. A release date. 
Guild Wars 2 is going to have a much higher level cap compared to the previous game, graphics that exceed anything from the first Guild Wars, as well as a much better progression system. The game will be a subscription-free MMO, meaning you only have to buy the game in order to play it, and nothing more. Combat has seen a huge overhaul from the first game as well, giving players more synergy instead of traditional tab and spam key combat. Return to Guild Wars come August 28th of this year. Activision has announced its return of the very popular map from Black Ops, Nuketown, to be hitting Black Ops 2. The map will be re-envisioned for the future and will be aptly titled Nuketown 2025. The map will be given to players who pre-order the game, so if you don't buy the game before it's released, you're not getting the full game. I love it when companies do this. We are still unaware if it's a specific retailer where you'll get the map or if it's going to be a code given to everyone with a pre-order. Either way, the map better come out for free for the people who didn't pre-order. Well, that's just my opinion. Radical Entertainment, the company behind the prototype games, has been closed for good. The news comes from the audio designer for the company, Rob Bridget, confirming the news on Twitter. Activision stated that they made a large investment into the IP of Prototype and it just didn't live up to its expectations. They also stated that they're significantly reducing its staff and leaving a few behind to finish up current projects. It's always a sad day to see a gaming company die off, but it's just how life goes. Watch Dogs, the biggest surprise for E3 this year, is a game that plays off of the privacy of one's identity in a more and more digital age. The demonstration of the game shown at the end of E3 led to an augmented reality game that focuses around the main antagonist. Any fans who had participated in the ARG have recently received an email. Shown within that email was a list of near a thousand people's email addresses being shown to anyone who had been signed up. The list showed any email address that started with either A or B. Shown with seems like a pretty big slip. Or an amazing marketing scheme. Big news on the market. Vivendi is planning to sell off Activision Blizzard. If no one can scrounge up the $8.1 billion to buy the large publishing company, then Vivendi plans to sell the stake on the open market. That's pretty interesting news, as Activision is currently publishing the annual Call of Duty game, and surely can't be a bad financial move for Vivendi. We'll see, coming soon. Call of Duty Black Ops will be getting a port to the OS X systems come sometime before November 13th. The port to the Mac will include the base game, as well as all four downloadable content packs that have been released during its lifetime. Exact pricing, as well as pricing on all the DLC, will be revealed at a later date. In my opinion, I think the game should be released at a $50 price tag with all the maps included. We'll see though. My question for you guys this week is, are you genuinely excited for yet another Call of Duty game, or are your expectations set pretty low from the previous ones? To me, Call of Duty is a dead horse beaten to death again by a cash cow stick. Treyarch is the only redeeming factor in the franchise as their employees are trying to keep the franchise fresh. Hopefully we've seen the last of Infinity Ward. Thank you all for watching, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe, and make sure you check it out next Sunday where we can keep you up to date on all the gaming industry has to offer. Good night everybody.